It's 26 August around 2.30. We started the harvest uh, last week, April. So, and then gradually completed over time. So last week was the last uh, harvest. We harvested, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven location. Last year, I only have data five location so comparing uh, from crop one to crop two or for dry season wet season uh, for monos we lost eight percent for north of the house we gained 25 percent the reason is having to do with the variety of seed we planted basal was literally flooded so a loss of almost 50 percent and laod broken down into two uh, hectares the uh, we had a gain of 21 percent uh, from crop one again this has to do with the seedlings from uh, uh, dry season and then mormon we have a loss of 11 percent and uh, that's attributed to uh, the weather. And then we have manga and bilia. I, I have no data from uh, first crop. Only five data from first crop and uh, more data from second crop. Now looking back at Monyos, uh, we, we, prom we, we harvested last week um, a last week in July because we, we were seeing the weather changing and if we didn't act, uh, I mentioned point of inflection, then we would be at a loss um, because the, the strong wind and rain was toppling rice and uh, that's why it is important to, uh, for me at least, uh, factor in uh, harvesting last week July we'll do that next year we'll be harvesting uh, middle July to end July uh, the experience we have for the five to six years uh, August September it was it's always like this strong wind lots of rain lots of precipitation and uh, the, the rice toppling so uh, we've decided to uh, change our tack and harvest July, uh, we know that we, we, we will have a much better uh, yield uh, as opposed to like Basau. Basically, they were toppled, they were submerged in water, and uh, it, it, it was difficult to watch. So, a loss of 50%. And, and Mormon, they were toppling too. However, it's, it's again... Uh, when I look into the, the difference between dry and wet season, it has to do with the weather. Uh, less solar brightness, uh, heat, and the rain really do uh, a number on the uh, flowering, pollinating uh, uh, panicles. So it's important to really manage those. When do you actually want to... Uh, to have the rice uh, basically flower and pollinate, you don't want it to do those things during um, the the time where it really rains quite a bit. So it happens. I mean, here Basau, first week of August, it, it's just uh, lots of rain, and uh, of course loud uh, because. Uh, we had two variety, and uh, even they were toppling too. So, however, the the the, the surprising thing between dry uh, season and wet season uh, has to do with the the type of seeds we planted. So that's a lessons learned right there. So uh, now that I am documenting all of this. It is important for me to, to
to make a decision when to actually plant and then when it is actually a time to harvest during wet season. Now for dry season, because uh, we scheduled, we, we needed to uh, harvest middle March because we want to target uh, harvesting between uh, middle July to end July. So we had to be, once we harvested mid-March uh, next year, then we work toward uh, managing the land so that we can start to uh, grow, I mean, to uh, transplant sometimes end of April so that we can uh, harvest uh, middle to end July. So th there, there is a big difference in um, gains between first crop and second crop. The, the second crop, we r truly implemented tri-split. So if I look at the, the tonnage, um, the, the combined uh, area, we were averaging 6.3 tons. Uh, with Basau, we we harvested 4.8, let's just call it 5 tons. Um, here, we we actually harvested in total around uh, 6 tons. However, a lot of these uh, additional tons were, we can't sell because of mud. They were mixed with the rice seeds. And so we were only able to, to sell around 4.8 tons. With, with uh, Villa, a new location, we were doing uh, around 7.3 tons. Allow the 7.1. And Monios is 6.4 6 tons. So uh, when I average all of these, they're actually averaging 6.3 tons. Now, when we look at actual yield uh, per square meter, it is six, 0 0.63 kilos per square meters. Ideally, if you want to go to like 8 tons, you want to have the, these to be around, uh, say, 8, uh, 1 kilos, basically. 1 kilos per square meter in 1 hectare would be 10 tons. So we want to be go we want to be up around 0 0.8 and up to to have 8 tons per uh, hectare. So once once we achieve uh, 8 tons per hectare then we we will work to hard we will work toward uh, 10 tons per hectare. So we're slowly inching into uh, into 10 tons per hectare, slowly. Uh, for wet weather or wet season, it, it's really going to be tough. So it's, it's a learning curve. However, for, uh, for dry seasons, as you can see for Basau, it's actually uh, the, the total mass we in crop, second, uh, first crop, is around 9.8 tons um, for 1.2 hectares. So we're, we're getting like 0 0.82 kilos per square meter. And, and uh, they, this is actually what we're targeting, 0 0.8 uh, kilos per square meter. So once we get to 0 0.8, then uh, we should be able to get to 1.0 kilos per square meter. So the first uh, bar is 0 0.8. And then the second bar is uh, uh, 1.0 kilos per square meter. And then the, uh, what I saw on YouTube, you can go as high as 14 tons per square meter. So 1.4 kilos per square meter. So that would be the highest bar we will be targeting. Uh, ideal, ideal target, I think uh, it, it can be done. So, so basically, uh, what did we learn in uh, 
wet season. So lots of uh, precipitation disturbing the uh, flowering and pollination. Uh, solar radiation, the brightness, is reduced by clouds. And thirdly, the temperature impacts yield. So these things uh, work together to uh, reduce yield during wet season. The tri-split really do work. Um, so we're going to continue doing tri-split. The, the change we're going to make is uh, when to transplant and when to harvest in wet season. So uh, for dry season, we're going to start uh, transplanting uh, last week, November, and then first to midweek, uh, December 2024. So those are the target so that we can uh, harvest all of the... Uh, the rice uh, before April. Uh, we intend to uh, work on managing the, the land so that we can start to uh, prep them with the intention of uh, harvesting mid of July to end July 2025. And then after that, of course, uh, when you once we completed those, then we have lots of Several months uh, follow, it would be August, September, October, and then last week, November. So uh, those would be the follow months. And uh, we will be maintaining the machines. Uh, and of course, the, the plan is to install a lot of solar pumps. So that's what we're going to do. So this is the, the end result. Um, the, it, it's certainly uh, by watching and learning these things, um, I'm able to understand the reasons why wet season is less, less yield than dry season. Now, there are, of course, mitigating circumstances. So those are lessons learned. So once they're uh, learned, uh, then it, we can improve the yield. So the the target we're going to to uh, work on is 0 0.8 kilos per square meter that would be eight tons per hectare and uh, work toward that target uh, that would be the bar uh, initially i didn't have a bar because because i didn't have it i didn't know what i was looking at so now that i do have a bar 0 0.8 then after that is achieved, then we will look at second bar, which is one kilo per square meter, which uh, translates to 10 tons per hectare. And then once we have reached that bar, then we will work toward uh, 14 tons per square meter. Could we do it? I don't know. Could we achieve 10 tons per hectare? I believe we can. It's, it's a lot of work. Um... So th that's what we're focusing on. I mean, imagine Basau is 8 tons per square, uh, I mean, 0 0.8 uh, kilos per uh, square meter. So that, that basically translates to 8 tons per uh, hectare. So if, it, if I could do it there, I could do it with the other ones. Um, so, I mean, 0 0.6, I mean, there are here like 0 0.55, here is the minimum, mainly because of weather. Here, because I, I again, because of uh, irrigation, uh, I wasn't able to irrigate the field when it's time for the uh, the booting phase, panicle initiation booting phase to occur. It was dry, so 0 0.55 kilos per square meter is the end result. So mostly, um, the majority of the, uh, the land are over 0 0.6 uh, kilos per square meter, actual. Um, of course, you have the, the min and max, okay? 
So the minimum is 0 0.49 and uh, the max here is 0 0.73 uh, kilos per square meter. Someday I hope to have it 0 0.8. So those are the target. Um, along the journey of this, I also learned how to estimate properly uh, because uh, before I didn't know how to estimate. So I, I derived two type of uh, equation. Uh, basically, uh, I think in my previous uh, videos, watch those and you will learn my derivation how to estimate. There's the more work type of estimates and the less work type of estimate. You can either do both. The, the main thing though is if you're not happy with the estimate, you can calibrate them. And how do you calibrate them? The, the thing that I did is 25 hills. So, or take one square meter and calibrate. And how do you do that? If you're not happy with one square meter, then uh, take 1.2 square meter. Uh, if you're not happy with that results, then take 1.3 square meter. Or the easiest way, is 25, if you don't like the, the end result of 25 hills, uh, take more hills uh, until the, uh, the yield estimate gets closer to your actual uh, yield. And that's how you calibrate your uh, coefficient. It's, it's uh, easy peasy. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, this is sort of can be understood how to calibrate the uh, the coefficient. Anyway, uh, the by adding uh, more hills, you're actually calibrating your the not the, not that the coefficient is changing. What's 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 being done is the the coefficient is constant, uh, and it's derived from a lot of data, um, or you can have your own data and derive it derive your own um, coefficient and uh, it's quite frankly it'll be it'll be the same as what I've derived so calibration if 25 is not enough to actual 25 hills then go 30 and if it's not enough then 35 between 25 to 35 you work with that those not range and you can then calibrate the uh, the Yield estimate to actual. It's uh, fairly straightforward uh, work. Uh, that that's that's how you that's how one can calibrate the uh, yield estimate to actual. So this this is uh, I think for a crop second crop or wet season crop. Uh, this is the last video on this matter. Uh, there's there's not much to to uh, show and tell now. Uh, later, maybe in November, I'll start to uh, video uh, our activities for First Crop 2025. Thanks for watching.